Hi, in this video we're going to look at uh, question 13 from step 1 2016, a probability question. Uh, we can see it says uh, in the question here we've got an uh, internet tester sending n emails uh, at time zero. They're all going to take a different amount of time to arrive at their destination and there'll be independent random variables with a PDF given by this uh, function in, in the question here, lambda e to the minus lambda t. Uh, t is positive obviously because it's a time and lambda is some rate that's also positive. And it says the random variable t is the time of arrival of the email that arrives first at its destination, and we want to show what its PDF is. Now, for a question like this, we don't. Uh, it's quite hard to work out the the uh, probability that the first email is less than something directly because, um, you know, I don't know which of the emails is going to be the first one to arrive. But it's easier to talk about this quantity, the probability that the first arrival time is larger than a certain value. Uh, because for it to be larger than a certain value uh, for the first arrival time, that means that you know none of them arrive before t. Okay, so all of the arrivals have to happen uh, have to happen after t. Okay, so uh, so what's the probability that one of them uh, arrives after t? Well, I could do the integral between t and uh, infinity of the PDF lambda e to the minus lambda, and I'm going to use s for the variable here instead of t because I don't want t to be in the function and in the integral here so uh, we'll do this integral with respect to s and then t will be the variable that we get out at the end and so this is one this would be one email arriving after time t but this means all of them do uh, but they're independent so actually for them all to arrive after time t I can just raise this to the power of n all right so we just need to work out this integral now it's not too difficult an integral to do, so uh, we can divide by the uh, the minus lambda here and get minus e to the minus lambda s between t uh, t and infinity, and then we're going to raise that to the power of n. Uh, if you plug in infinity to this, uh, we've got e to the minus infinity, which is zero. Being a little bit imprecise here, it's really a limit, but you I hope you know what I mean. And then minus minus. Uh, e to the minus lambda t, so I just get e to the minus lambda t, all raised to the power of n, which is e to the minus uh, n lambda t, just using the rules of indices. Um, and actually a particular case of this that we're going to end up using again later in the question is also when n equals 1, and we'll just notice that you know, the probability that one email, if I just had one email, that it arrives after time t would be e to the minus uh, lambda t, uh, but, we, but we want it in general for n here. Uh, as well. Okay, so uh, so this is uh, probably t is greater than t, so if I wanted the probability now that the time is less than or equal to t, uh, or, or just less than it's the same thing, we've got a continuous variable, uh, it would be just 1 minus e to the minus uh, n lambda t, so the pdf, this is the cdf of the function, so the pdf uh, I get by just differentiating, so this 1 differentiates to 0, and we differentiate the, this, so we get the constant minus n lambda here, so we have n lambda e to the minus uh, n lambda t. Uh, so that's the, uh, and that's exactly as we were required to show. And then it says find the expected value of t, so you need to know the uh, how to work out expected values for continuous random variables. We uh, take the PDF and multiply it by uh, t, and... Uh, integrate with respect to t across the whole range of values. So t here ranges from 0 to infinity. Um, and you can see we've got a t here and a t up here, so we need to do an uh, integration by parts. So people use different notations for this. Uh, I'm going to uh, you know, use the, the result that uh, use integration by parts as the integral of u times v dashed is equal to uv minus the integral of u dashed v. So I'm going to take my u here just to be a t, so it becomes simpler when I differentiate it, so this will be easier to uh, integrate than this, and then we'll take our v dashed or dv by dt to be the rest of it, which is uh, n lambda e to the minus n lambda t. So integrating this is quite nice because we've got the n lambda as the constant here, so I've just got minus e to the minus uh, n lambda t, so this integration by parts formula just then gives us 
uh, u times v, so that's minus t e to the minus n lambda t between 0 and infinity. And then I need to subtract the integral of uh, this times this, but this, so I'll, uh, let's make it a plus and ignore this minus. So e to the minus n lambda t dt between 0 and infinity. Right, now we look at this first one here. Uh, when we put in infinity, the exponential is 0. When I put in 0, the t is 0. So this is just 0. And then we integrate this term here, and we get uh, minus 1 divided by n lambda e to the minus n lambda t between 0 and infinity. Uh, again, I put it in infinity to this, and I get a 0. So I do minus uh, this. Now when I put in the 0, the exponential term here becomes 1. Uh, so I'm just left with this bit here, and it's uh, minus, so it's minus minus, so it's 1 divided by uh, n lambda for the expected uh, value of t. So for part 2, I've just summarised two things here from part 1 that we want to remember. As I said, we want to remember that for the survival probability for just one email is e to the minus lambda t, and that... Uh, this is a calculation we used to work out the expectation uh, that this integral is equal to 1 over n lambda, and we're going to use those things to simplify the calculations in part 2, because it says write down the probability that the second email to arrive uh, at its destination arrives later than t, hence derive the PDF for the arrival of the second email, and show the expected time of arrival as given by this formula. So it's kind of the same steps we did before, but we're doing it for the second email rather than the first. Okay, so um, so let's say s is the time of arrival of the second email. You might write that out in it in the question here. Um, and let's think about what's the probability that s is greater than or equal to a, to a given time. Well, this could happen uh, either if the first email actually doesn't hasn't arrived by t, then certainly the second one won't have done either. Um, so that's just e to the minus lambda t all to the power of n. Or it might be that one of the emails arrives. Uh, before time t, and then n minus 1 of them uh, don't. Uh, so n minus 1 of them not arriving uh, by time t is just e to the minus lambda t to the n minus 1. Now, probability that one email does arrive before time t then is just 1 minus this probability, so it's 1 minus e to the minus lambda t. And this could be any of the n emails. So it's a bit like a binomial probability here, actually, where I'm taking this e to the minus lambda t as the p in the binomial distribution and saying, what's the probability I get exactly one, you know, a one success, uh, where success means an email arriving before time t, right? So I've got uh, n uh, here as my binomial coefficient, n choose one, or you just think of it as n different emails that could be the first one. So none of them arrive before time t, or any of the n emails arrive and then the other n minus 1 don't. Okay, So this is my so basically the answer to the first part of, of part 2. Um, but we can uh, simplify this a little bit. So let's uh, write this as e to the minus n lambda t. And if you multiply this out, you think you've got n e to the minus, this is n minus 1 lambda t. Okay, uh, And then the final term, I've got an n times e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t times e to the minus lambda t, so that would be like this term times by e to the minus lambda t, so we wouldn't have the minus 1, so we would just get plus n e to the minus uh, n lambda t, check the exponentials if, you're, if you want to be, if you need to be convinced. Um, so, uh, so we have uh, that there, and of course it's minus not plus. Uh, so like these two terms are the same, so I've got 1 minus n e to the minus n lambda t plus n e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t. Okay, so uh, now hence derive the density function for the second email and show the expected time as given. So the, to do the density function, again, we'll do the same as we did before. So uh, the probability that s is less than or equal to t, that cdf is 1 minus all of this. And then to get the density function, we differentiate it with respect to t. So I do the derivative of 1 minus 1 minus n times e to the minus n lambda t, uh, and then uh, also minus n minus e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t. So differentiating this, the 1 goes to 0, 
uh, here I get a minus n lambda, so I get uh, n lambda 1 minus n, e to the minus n lambda t, and uh, in this one uh, we get the minus n minus 1 lambda comes down, so I get uh, plus n n minus 1 lambda e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t. So just to be a bit careful with all of the constants there. All right, so that's the PDF. And again, to do the expectation, uh, so the expectation of s, we just uh, integrate this and uh, multiply it by t across its whole uh, domain, right? So uh, I want to do uh, the integral between 0 and infinity of t times this. Now, I'm going to write this down uh, in a way that allows us to use the integration we've done earlier to speed up the last part of the question. Okay, so I'm going to get things in this form, because you see what I've got here is basically what's in this integral times by a constant. So if I just pull that constant out, 1 minus n, I multiply by t for the expectation part, so I have n lambda t e to the minus n lambda t. Uh, and this integral here, I'm going to do the same sort of thing, but now I've got an e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t here, so I, want, I do want the n minus 1 in place of n, so this time we pull out the n and have n minus 1 lambda t e to the minus n minus 1 lambda t dt. And the beauty of this is we don't need to do the integration again because we've already done it. Right? I already know this integral is 1 over n lambda, so this is just 1 minus n over n lambda. And this integral here is the same as this formula but with n minus 1 in place of n. Right? So I'm going to get this n here and then times 1 over n minus 1 lambda, so this is going to be n times n divided by n minus 1 lambda. So we're really being efficient with the calculations we've already done. Um, and then we're almost there. This looks doesn't look too far off the formula given in the question. We can see we've got a 1 over lambda in both of these. So this is 1 over lambda times 1 minus n over n plus n over n minus 1. And now you can rearrange this into the form uh, given in a couple of different ways. I think the easiest thing to do here is to write this as 1 over n minus n over n for the first one, and for the second one we'll do n minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 1. And uh, you can see that we've got this is 1 and this is 1, so they cancel out. Uh, so this does all simplify down to give uh, exactly the expression that we were given in the question, 1 divided by n minus 1 plus 1 over n. So that's the end of that question. Okay, I hope that was useful. Lots more um, videos and resources and things on the website at Mathsaurus. Don't forget to uh, like the video and share it and subscribe if you have found it useful. And uh, good luck with your exams.